Residents of Assessing Sue, a farming community in the Wasa Mifi East District of the Western Region, have been forced to hold a vigil for fear of being attacked by military officers stationed in the upper Wasa forest. Uh, one person sustained gunshot wounds on Wednesday after military officers fired several warning shots and arrested eight others. It followed a confrontation between sections of the youth who demanded a Chinese miner transporting an excavator pay a token before he's allowed to use the bridge in the town. Ohimming Terrier has been following up and he's filed this. Residents say several appeals to the Chinese miner identified only as Joel to support the mechanization of a borehole for the basic school in the area has proved futile. The token demanded by the youth was to support maintenance of a bridge constructed through communal labor. The demand by the youth who had mounted a barrier angered the mined workers who fired several shots to disperse them. A pump action gun in their possession was seized and handed over to the elders of the community in their ensuing confrontation. The military, however, arrived a few minutes later after being called in allegedly by the Chinese miner and fired several warning shots, one of them hitting the ankle of 32-year-old Yao Nkroma. He was later treated and discharged by the Dunkwa Garvin Hospital after being referred by the Diaso Health Center. As the Sensu Abusiampedi handed over the gun seized by the youth to the Sekibekwai police, he tells me residents have been forced to flee the town. The people are living in fear. They take to their heels anytime they see a vehicle entering the town. They say the military will return to harass them. I have been trying to convince them, but all to no avail. We are all living in fear. His fear is confirmed by residents who are afraid to go to bed. They have kept vigil throughout the night for fear of being harassed by the military. As at the time Joy News was leaving the community at about 2 a.m., residents, including these school kids, were still loitering around. Some of them want the president to intervene. The security fired indiscriminately. He fired five times, so we forcefully seized the gun from him. We realized he was drunk. The entire town is in fear because of the action of the military. Some of the people have fled the town and are yet to return. We will stay awake because we suspect the military men will be here. They have been protecting the Chinese. Now my brother is shot in the leg. How do you ban illegal mining when foreigners are doing it? How dare you? Are we not human beings? How dare you? And I had a I live in fear. I even fled and left my child behind. The sight of their uniform scares me. I took refuge in their bush. President Akufado should intervene. Now, my colleague Ohiming Terrier has joined us over the telephone with the updates. Ohiming, what's the situation on the ground currently? For now, the, the situation remains unchanged. Uh, after the last time I had a, uh, a chat with a resident uh, in Afghanistan, too, they saw me uh, through the military officers did not show up at uh, this door. They still uh, live in fear because they are uncertain of when the military uh, was strike, uh, taking into consideration that they are big. Uh, it's not far from where they are. Uh, don't forget that the, the late Major Mahama was actually the commanding, uh, uh, commander commanding uh, uh, that military detachment that they are based at Amenasi in the upper Dinsha West District. It also shares border with the Amenfi, uh, uh, East, uh, Amenfi East District. Uh, so they, they, are, they still live in fear. Uh, for now, I'm told the the Bishafeni and some elders of the community uh, would go to the Sagibakwai police station this morning and try to uh, seek a deal for uh, six 
uh, out of the eight people who were arrested yesterday, uh, yesterday uh, two of them were granted bail, uh, leaving six of them still in police uh, uh, custody. So that is what the elders of uh, the uh, uh, you know the community uh, will try uh, to do uh, uh, this morning, my brother. So what's the condition of the one who sustained the gunshot wound? After this dawn, when I left him, actually I left the community uh, at 4 a.m. this morning, and I spoke to him around 12 midnight. Uh, he was uh, responding to treatment after being referred from Yaso uh, Health Center to uh, the Dinsa Government Hospital, Dunkwa Dinsa uh, Dunkwa Government Hospital, uh, to seek uh, further treatment. And he told me, though he was in pain, uh, he believed that uh, he would get over uh, those pain and then uh, get uh, to uh, his normal uh, duties, uh, normal activities in the community. But he still uh, maintains that uh, he, uh, you know, he didn't uh, do anything to warrant uh, the attack uh, on him. It's just that the military officers uh, give one shot and one of the shots uh, hit his ankle. He was standing somewhere. So when he uh, uh, definitely uh, he wants to uh, pursue uh, this matter uh, to its logical conclusion. Now, uh, have we had any word from the military or any of the security officials in that locality? Not at all. Uh, per the location of uh, Assistant Su, uh, it falls within the western region. And uh, for those of us who are so conversant with the terrain, uh, they share border with the central region uh, in the uh, upper uh, Wasa uh, forest. That is where uh, the community is located. So sometimes, if you want to reach the district capital, that is Wasa uh, Propong, it's a bit far. Uh, so anything of a sort uh, in terms of criminal uh, uh, reportage or complaints has to be lodged with either Seri, uh, Bekwai, or maybe a BBNE. That is also uh, some sort of a, a distance from the community. Uh, so uh, I haven't heard anything from uh, the district or the divisional police command. All that I, I do know is that yesterday there were uh, some police officers uh, in the community. They came together with a BNI uh, officer uh, to ascertain for themselves the diversity of the issue. And since they left, uh, nobody apart from the military officers have been in the community. After the last time, last night, when I, I went to the community, uh, there were some military officers back in the community, and that also sent some shivers uh, through the spine of the uh, residents. They thought that the military officers were there to harass them, but unfortunately, uh, they, you know, it, that, it didn't confirm their, uh, their fear. They were there to actually uh, pick up a vehicle belonging to um, so the Chinese uh, officials that have been broken down. Uh, so they, they left the community. They didn't uh, uh, attack or harass uh, the people after that time. And throughout my stay in the community, I didn't uh, notice anything of that sort. So mm -hmm. I believe that today, once the issue has come to the public uh, domain, uh, definitely the district and the divisional police command uh, will want to, uh, uh, you know, uh, take a decision on this. And I can also confirm that I uh, take information that uh, uh, the military high command and some uh, uh, family members of the late Major Mahama are also heading towards uh, Upper Dinsha West, uh, here. So uh, I'm not sure of what they will be doing, but that is information I have picked from a very credible source. So I do believe that once the military high command gets to Diaso, which is not far uh, from Amenasi, and then uh, uh, the community in which the incident happens, they may attempt to visit the area as well. Mm. Thank you very much, Ohimeng Teria, for that report. We'll be coming back to you uh, during our later bulletins for updates, particularly on what's happening with the security officials and the military. Thank you, Ohimeng. Now, let's stay with Galamsey issues because illegal miners whose mining boats were being destroyed by a task force from the Upper Dinsha West and East Assemblies have hauled insults and curses 
on the members of the team at Subing. The task force made up of the security agencies with the support of the Small Scale Miners Association have gone to Subing to enforce a presidential ban on illegal mining when the miners mining in the Ofin River invited deities on the task force. My colleague Ohim Teria again reports that uh, these officials defied cases hauled on them by miners who have pitched camp on the River of Finn despite presidential ban on illegal mining. It's been a very tiring day for officials of the Upper Dinsha West and Upper Dinsha East districts and they have been in this community trying to bring down activities of illegal miners who, despite a presidential ban on illegal mining activities, are bent on carrying through their activities. Some of them have pitched camp here in this stream. I'm told it's a river of fame. And unfortunately, they have what they call chamfai machines. These machines are made of Chinese uh, technology. And this is what they use to mine uh, minerals in this water. The machines uh, with uh, locally manufactured uh, bulls uh, sit right in the uh, river and try to uh, extract gold from the stream. It's been a very difficult day. And the activities of these illegal miners clamping down on them comes with a cost. Today, I witnessed an instance where officials of this task force were cursed by an irate illegal miner because he's not happy his boat was being destroyed by the task force. This uh, uh, activity is being supported by the Small Scale Miners uh, uh, Association in the Upper Dinsha West and Upper Dinsha East uh, districts. Let me speak to uh, Mr. Fred uh, Podo. Uh, he's the uh, district coordinating uh, director for Upper Dinsha uh, West district. Uh, let me pick this from you. What is your reaction to this man uh, who hold all sort of uh, cases on the uh, task force? Yeah, for that man, you know, interestingly, you see, when you are doing something and uh, whatever you are doing is for the right cause, you know, you have God to stand on your side. So, I mean, he can rattle those cases, but I know that it's not going to impact on any of us. I see. Uh, initially, when he started uh, with, with the first, he started with cry. Uh, I could hear his voice, uh, you know, very in a very solemn way. He's not happy. You could see he's not a happy man. From my point of view, I thought probably this would be his life savings because, uh, yeah, he has spent a lot of money to uh, manufacture uh, this boat and you are here to destroy them. I thought at that point you could be, uh, you know, a, a bit relaxed with the law. Uh, couldn't you have been so merciful to this uh, illegal miner? Yeah, human as we are, we all empathize with that uh, gentleman. But let us not forget that uh, if we are to come here with empathy, I mean, to consider him because he's life savings is uh, on this particular project, then we cannot make any headway. I believe that, you know, the directive is stop work. So, I mean, it is time for all of us to comply until such time that the ban will be lifted. Okay, let me take you back to uh, an earlier conversation we had. There, there were speculations that uh, this uh, particular operation is in line with the, the death of the late Major Adam Mahama, who was lynched uh, in the Shah of Wase. Uh, has it got anything uh, to do with this issue? Uh, the question once more, you know, yeah, somewhere uh, along the line, I think uh, the premise, I yes, agree, I, so. Yes, I, I want to find out from you, today's uh, operation, is it uh, as a result of the fact that the lead uh, uh, Major Mahama was lynched in the Nchobwase by suspected, uh, as people put it, illegal miners. That is why you are here uh, to clamp down on the activities of illegal miners. My brother, you know, proud to this exercise, and as I said earlier on, you know, before captains, you know, demise, you know, the district security committee had already met and strategized on, uh, you know, this particular exercise. So we have intended plans of coming to do this exercise. Just that, you know, the major's death came in and we had to suspend it until this time. And are we going to see more of these uh, exercises or maybe it's be one off thing? We are going to see more of this. We are going to see more of this. We intend to embark on, you know, more exercise the coming week, maybe a week or two. We intend to, you know, hit the ground. Why the involvement of the Upper Dinsha East District, for instance? 
Upper Dentra East is very critical here. They are our mother district. And you know, experience is the best teacher. They started about two months ago. We are now, today's our maiden, you know, operation. And we deem it appropriate, I mean, to, I mean, uh, solicit the uh, assistance, you know, as we, we, we undertake the exercise today. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Uh, Fred Podo. He is the district coordinating director for Apadinsha West District Assembly. I must say, it's been a very tiring and difficult uh, day for uh, members of the task force made up of uh, the police, uh, the military uh, uh, officers, uh, BNI, uh, as well as members of the uh, Small Ski uh, Mining Association. Let me find out for Mr. Uh, Isaac uh, uh, Peter Aike. Uh, Peter Aike is the public relations officer for the Small Ski uh, Miners Association. So why the decision, uh, please come closer, why the decision to partner the Upper Densha West and Upper Densha East uh, uh, assemblies when we do know that this is purely uh, something that has got to do with the, these two assemblies? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we have a collaboration team because we as a Dunkwao, Specifically, I started this some couple of months, and uh, as we have been in expert in it, basically we have divers. So our brothers also needed our support. So we thought it wise to collaborate. I mean, to come down to visit their area. So today has been one of the best. I mean, exercise so far we've had. And definitely, we never had any challenge in. In terms of uh, the people trying to, sometimes they may try to uh, may come closer. But this time around, because the police are involved, immediately they see us coming, they just run away. So we just had it easy to just destroy their boats. But I, I am surprised because we are talking about uh, mining, and we do know that the Small Scale Miners Association also do mining. So why would you partner uh, two assemblies to uh, evict uh, miners who are actually, you know, practicing or working here? We are talking about illegal mining here, not mining. We are legal miners, that is Small Scale Miners. The name is Ghana National Association of Small Scale Miners, and we are talking about Illegal. These things are illegal. Purely no law is backing somebody who is mining on the river bodies. So we, the licensed miners on the land, have seen it uh, supporting the idea of government to get rid of these people. That's why we've taken this decision. Okay. Uh, when we were coming, I saw a, a land being reclaimed. I'm told uh, the land is being reclaimed by the Small Scale Miners Association. Uh, can you fill me in? How come you are doing this? Because you are not the ones who mined in those areas. Oh, for sure. This is a general issue. And uh, it's not about individual. It's about the uh, Small Scale Miners. We are a team and a body as a whole, as you know. So if something is not going on well, definitely if you have the support, you can support your brother to, I mean, do the right thing. Ours is uh, just to monitor and also be in a tax force to see to do the right thing is being done so that we'll get rid of the illegal ones. Then we'll get an opportunity to go back to the field and do our work. I see. So you, you are trying to push the illegal one so that you have the opportunity to rush in and also do your work uh, as required by law. I know you are lying since as you put it. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I'm not surprised. So it's been a very difficult day, as you heard from Mr. Uh, Peter Aike. He is a public relations officer for the Small Scale Miners Association in the Upper Densha West and East uh, Districts. And here we are in Subi, in the Upper Densha West District. I can report that 44 of these Chin uh, Chinese uh, uh, manufactured uh, uh, machines, Chanfai machines, as we call it locally, uh, 44 of them uh, have been destroyed. And I'm not sure the owners will have the opportunity uh, to repair them and use them again. So, from Subi in the Upper Dinsha West District, this has been Ohimi Interior reporting for Joy News. Now, away from issues dealing with Galamsee. <laughs>